When people think about using computers in offices, they imagine them being used by large corporations in dull, drab concrete buildings, surrounded by even more dull, drab concrete buildings. Well, often that's true. But today, the microcomputer is being used in small businesses in the most unusual surroundings. The Scarfell Hotel in Borrowdale is typical of many small businesses which have found they can use a modest microcomputer to help them with their work. Miles Jessup believes it improves the service he provides in small but significant ways. When you arrive, there's no sign of computer screens to spoil the intimate atmosphere. In a family hotel, personal service matters, and the more time you can devote to this rather than to office work, the better. <laughs> to take a small example, with a good kitchen, the chef wants to be able to offer a wide choice, and that means varying the menus frequently. A simple word processing program on the computer makes it easy to make small changes on the existing printed menus and then print them out again quickly. So like the food, they look fresh and well presented. What are the benefits of using from the computer system, Miles? Well, when we're replying to letters, we can get them off very much quicker we get our letters out on the word processor in about 25 seconds and menus, we can get those out in about a minute, which has tremendously speeded up the whole process. And of course, there are no mistakes because we've checked it all fully on the VDU screen. Do your customers really appreciate it? Very much so, yes. Um, we've had bookings, in fact, purely and simply on the fast return of mail. And what's your future plans? Well, I want to get all the business and financial control onto it to give me more free time. Free time to, to do what? Just this. <laughs> like most people, Miles had no previous experience of using computers. He found technical advice and support a few miles away across the mountains in the little town of Ambleside. In most towns, small firms have begun to establish local reputations for supplying hardware and software, and Ambleside is no exception. For most micros, there are standard software packages to help in many routine jobs for the small businessman. But many of them need minor modifications or to be configured to do a particular job. So unless you're a software expert yourself, you've got to be certain that you get competent advice. It's all right to sell a system, but you've got to hold the customer's hand while he gets to know how to use it. And then you've got to make sure he's got the supplies to keep the machine running, paper, uh, ribbons and that sort of thing. and it will break down. With the best will in the world, any piece of equipment will break down. And he wants a very fast support. Because if you're in the middle of, say, your hotel bills in the night, and your computer breaks down, you want someone there pretty sharp, otherwise you're not going to get any money off your um, clients as they leave in the morning. Fortunately, David Fry also runs a small pub and restaurant. So Miles had been able to see the software running in a similar situation to his own before committing himself to buying it. Anyone buying a computer application should get a good taste of it first. Well, the restaurant package prepares the bills for the, the customers from a pre-selected menu and a pre-selected wine list. Uh, the op operator, the, the cashier, calls up the various menu items on a number code, one of number one, for example, um, and moves through the items that the customer has chosen. Then it moves on to the same four wines in bottles and half bottles, and ultimately at the end of it comes out the bill, with no more than just pressing one key and it produces a bill on nicely printed stationery. Good presentation. First the typewriter, then the typing pool had a profound effect on the processing of the printed word. Now the word processor has transformed the preparation and editing of complex documents. In today's offices, word processing is the single most popular use of the standalone micro. Many offices in the high street are benefiting from this aspect of computing. 
and some have applications that are absolutely tailor-made for word processing. In the solicitor's office, the average will is likely to be full of standard chunks of text. Um, alternatively, we could have two of the partners of this firm, if you would like that. Mm, I think I'd like to appoint two friends. Good, fine. fine. And um, if you'd like to give me their names. Uh, Robert Wick. Name. Clause one stays in. Clause two stays in. Insert the uh, name of the wife, please. That's uh, Joan Brown. Standard paragraphs stored on floppy disk and, uh, can easily be pulled into the work processor to be merged with personal information. This reduces typing errors, reduces proofreading, and reduces the number of legal secretaries needed for a given amount of work. Executors. Word processing has led to a new cottage industry. This high street bureau provides an overflow service for the local business community. But it also means that they can offer to do things for casual customers that otherwise would simply not have been economical. We've had an example fairly recently where we've um, produced CVs and job applications for um, a sixth former. He's just leaving school, he wanted a job. We've written to more than 50 companies for him um, and each letter has been personalised and each letter has had a paragraph in it or part of a paragraph that has been specific to that company. There is no way he could have produced those on a typewriter in the time. So what is word processing? Well, at its simplest, it's text editing. Being able to correct mistakes like this. We've got a letter here, and we want to correct a mistake. And I position the cursor where the letter's missed out and simply type it in. And I might want to move paragraphs around in the letter, so I can simply position uh, the cursor over the paragraph that I want to move, which is the second paragraph. And I'm going to move that down the letter and eliminate the fourth paragraph. So I'm going to copy that into a file and take it out from that position. And I want to put it into there, so I simply print it in there. The cursor's now positioned over the paragraph I want to remove, so I simply remove that paragraph, and there is the letter. Now, this particular letter, we want to send out to contributors who've appeared on various of our programs, and we want to tell them when the programs are going to be transmitted. So we have two files here. First of all, a file of their names, and we can look at that, and there is a list of their names. It contains their Christian names, their address, and the number of programs that they're in. We also have another file, which is a file of the dates when the programs are going to appear. So we want to take the names and addresses from the first file, the Christian name, and pull off the appropriate programs from the second and incorporate them within the letter. And we've written a small program to do that, and all I do is position the cursor over the program and then run it. And that's the first letter. And we can see that it's taken the address, it's taken his Christian name, and the two programs in which it's appeared. And as we continue, it will automatically go through every one of those letters, all the names and addresses, and give them each of them a personalised letter, and of course print them out on the printer at the same time. This is a microcomputer designed for work processing. It's got special function keys on the keyboard, and it's got a high-definition screen. But all these business micros are capable of running work processing, providing you by the suitable package, and there's plenty of those available. Most businessmen don't write their own software. They'll buy packages that have already been written and tested in companies similar to their own. Apart from routine accounting, there are four main areas that computers can be used in business. Firstly, word processing that we've already seen. Secondly, financial planning. And it's this one area alone that enabled the microcomputer to be accepted in the business community. In the corridors of power at the London Borough of Hammersmith, Clive Holfham, the Director of Finance, has a formal meeting with the elected chairman of the Finance Committee to discuss the probable changes in rates. One of his assistants is operating a small micro running a financial planning programme called a spreadsheet, which enables them to look at alternative ways of spending quite sizable sums of our money and to ask the question, what if? In this case, what if the population of the borough were to fall? As seems likely. But I'm very worried that because we have a declining population, when the figures are changed next year, we may lose grant as a consequence. And I think Steve will be able to show us um, on the computer the effect that a fall in population next year would have. 
Well, now, what sort of a fall can we expect of, uh, to about, say, 150,000? I think that, that's one that's worth looking at. Well, yes. now, show us what's the effect if we go down to 150,000. We can see that almost instantaneously, we now come up with a figure of some 59.43 pence, which is approximately a 3% rise in our rate levy. So just the loss of 3,000 population will increase our rate rates by 3%. I'm afraid so. Well, that was a real example of the use of a financial planning system, or an electronic spreadsheet, as they've come to be known. All the eyes an electronic representation on the computer of the old familiar accountant spreadsheet. A number of columns running across a page, in this case they're months, but they could be anything, and variables running down here. And it will carry out calculations across the columns or across the rows, or indeed for any of the individual cells of numbers. It may sound a little bit complicated, but in fact the principles are very straightforward. And we have a training program here, which is very simple and very easy. And what we're going to do, using this very limited little program, is to produce a financial plan for a teddy bear's picnic. The number of honey jars they have, jam, etc., etc. And we're going to work out how much it costs per bear, and we can do a little bit of what-if on it at the end when we've created the model. Well, the first thing we have to do is some very simple calculations or rules, exactly in the same sort of way as you would do it on your ordinary paper spreadsheet. We've got honey jars here, we've got a number we're going to have to enter, a price, and then it's going to calculate the total. So we'll start on the total first, the rules as they're called. So in E1, we're going to put a rule. And the rule is, it's obviously the number multiplied by the price, so it's C1 multiplied by D1. That enters the rule. And now all we have to do is to put in the various numbers. So in C1, we're going to put in the number of honey jars. We'll call it 100. And in D1, the actual price per honey jar. D1, and we'll call it 50p. And as soon as I press the return, the calculation is carried out, and we've got 50 pounds worth of honey there for them. Well, we've written a little model for this, and we can draw out the model right out of the system and there it is we've got honey jars marmalade jars bread loaves butter pounds etc chocolate bars ginger pop and so on and we come up with a total cost there's 100 bears attending and the cost per bear is one pound 35. now the really interesting thing is if something changes and for example if our honey jar instead of costing 50p let us say the price went up to one pound 50. all we have to do is to alter it D1, £1.50. And as we'd expect, the cost per bear has gone up to £2.35. Now, suppose instead of having 100 bears attending, we now have 150 bears. What's going to happen to the cost per bear then? So we simply type J3 and we put in 150. And the calculation, again, as we'd expect, is reduced to £1.57p. Well, this is fairly small. It can actually only handle models the size of the numbers that can be displayed on the screen itself. In practice, professional systems can actually handle hundreds of thousands of numbers. They can do forecasting, they can do statistics, they can display the results in colour graphic output form, and they would also be able to handle teddy bears picnics in many countries, each in a different currency with different costs, and then consolidate them all together to find out the total cost of this multinational teddy bears picnic. In practice, there's hardly a company in the country that couldn't make use of this type of electronic spreadsheet. They're very useful for handling numeric data, but not all data is numeric. Very often you have to handle alphabetic data, and that needs to be sorted, it needs to be selected, and it needs to be combined in various ways to provide reports that you can readily understand. And that's the third major area of usage for a business micro, a data management system. In midsummer, the tennis courts in Hammersmith are in heavy demand, and the borough's parks department have been trying to make it easier for people to book a court. On this micro, they've written the program using a database package. Okay, can you give me your number? Seven four three. And what day do you want to play? Bishop's Park. At what time? It knows the names and addresses of all season ticket holders, how many games they're still in credit, and details of the booking for each court. Any particular court? A quick check 
verifies your identity by checking your season ticket number against the name and address held in the database. It also shows what courts are free. A booking then deducts a game from your credit. The system even keeps track of the renewal of season tickets. Basically, the whole accountancy and booking system is all in one. And then at the end of each week, we have a reporting line so that we get statistics on the usage of each and every court in each park. And we have reports that total that so that we can get a monthly usage and so on. We also have the facility to interrogate as we wish to find out any other statistics that we like. Tailoring a data management package themselves led to remarkably few hiccups. Problems that there have been have been minor program bugs. When we first designed a record card, we used the word file twice. So if you interrogate and ask for file, it doesn't know which one it's looking for. And that's a minor program bug. But that's the sort of level of bug. Things that are annoying take a good while to put right, but haven't in any sense um, questioned our faith in the system. The amount of data for this application is relatively small, and its value is limited to few people. On the other hand, big databases holding information of interest to a large number of people can be reached through the telephone line. And being able to delve into these is the fourth major use of the micro in business. Sheila, you're experimenting with a um, secretarial workstation. Yeah. What sort of things can you do with it? Um, I can create a letter, and within that letter I can give information on, say, um, the times of the shuttle, which I can get from the database, something like Prestel. Prestel is British Telecom's large public database, and Sheila's terminal is capable of dialing into it automatically. In this case, she's interested in the kind of information that many people, for example travel agents, would find useful. On this machine, the material from Prestel appears on the right-hand side of the split screen. So I'm going to go into the letter that I created to bring the information across. Which it will do. That's the data I need. And I'm just going to finish it off. The letter can now be printed out, or I can take the information and, and make it into a telex and send it through the teleprinter network. You're absolutely certain that that information is absolutely correct. You haven't retyped That's it right. It's now. updated. So you've got the, the up-to-the-minute up to information. And correct. And correct. Yes. Versatile as they are, most of today's personal computers still require an understanding of a good deal of technical jargon. Well, for a home micro, this is really quite a powerful machine. But you've still got to know how to format your own discs, for example. And to use it for any complex office task is quite difficult. You'd either have to write the program in BASIC, or you'd have to buy a series of application packages, spreadsheet, work processing, and so on. And the files between these are not linked together. And to use them, you really do have to know about computers. But new ideas are emerging that make how you work at a computer much more like how you work at your desk. Some recently marketed micros attempt to do away with the need for technical jargon and make use of symbols on the screen known as icons. The first thing you see when you switch this machine on is a representation of what might be considered your desktop. And down at the bottom are little diagrams which represent the sort of tools you might find on your desk. We have the clock here and simply by positioning the arrow over the clock we can bring the clock out and tell the time. Well, this is a device that's used to move the arrow around the screen. It's quite simple, really. It's called a mouse. And as you move it across the table, this ball rotates and positions the arrow anywhere on the screen over what you want to select. Once you've decided what it is you want to select, you simply press this button on top of the mouse. The most interesting part is the filing cabinet, which is a pictorial representation of this. And it's a hard disk, a fixed disk. It's got five million bytes in it. And I can look at the files that I've got in there by bringing it out to look at. Well, these are files or representations of files. I've got one here called garbage. If I want to throw it away, it's even got its own built-in waste paper basket. I select it with the mouse and just drag it across the waste paper basket. And in some mysterious way, it's disappeared inside the machine. 
And the first thing I'm going to look at is the spreadsheet. Well, that's a fairly straightforward, simple little spreadsheet. We've got six months budget figures here and five months of actuals with the variance and then the total for that six months. And I've got a blank in here for the month of June and I want to fill in the actual figure for that and recalculate the totals and the variance. And now for the first time, I actually have to use the keyboard. So I'm going to put in the number 13,000 and it will calculate that immediately. And you can see it's 1,600 pounds behind budget or so. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is to make a graph of this. So I simply select, once again, the graph here. Well, the software is pulling the data down from the file. And whilst it's doing that, of course, the machine can't be doing anything else. And the, instead of a little arrow on the screen, it gives that little hourglass to say that the computer's tied up. Unfortunately, sand doesn't run through it. I guess that would take up too much processing time. So there we've got an empty graph that we're going to fill in. And it's been put on top of the spreadsheet. So like you would on a desk, you want to get the spreadsheet back on top to look at the numbers. And you simply click that, and immediately the spreadsheet comes back onto the top. And I want to select these numbers here to put it onto the graph paper, and I'm going to copy that onto the clipboard. And I simply copy that so it knows that those are the numbers that I'm going to be using. I then go back and bring the graph paper onto the top of the pile. It's almost exactly like using papers on your desk, shuffling them around, and it can get quite confusing after a bit if you lose something. And I will then position those numbers in there and paste it. So I just simply say paste, the numbers appear, and instantly the graph is drawn. The next thing I'm going to do is to incorporate that graph in a memo, so I have to select the memo. And I do that by, again, positioning the arrow and pressing it. Well, this is a memo from Nick Brutal, the sales director, to all his sales managers, and it's fairly typically abrupt. And he wants to show them what dreadful performance he's been having that year. To position the graph, all I do is place the arrow where I'd like the graph to be positioned, and then paste it in that position. And instantly, it comes out, and there it is. I might want to add some text into this memo, and all I do is position the arrow over the text, and then put it just where I want to add in the text. So this is it. once again where I actually have to use the keyboard and I might want to say get a grip, which they all know the meaning of. They might not quite appreciate the importance of that message, so he might want to get it into a type style with more emphasis. So he can change the type style and he simply selects that again with the mouse and takes it down to a third of an inch classic and there we have Get a Grip from Nick Brutals, and if that doesn't get attention, nothing else will. And of course, you could now print that out on one sheet of paper. The applications we've seen involve a microcomputer sitting in the corner of the office, perhaps dedicated to one single application, even quite a complicated one like the one we've just seen. But standalone applications don't offer any real threat to the structure of an organisation, and they can be quite easily justified on efficiency terms alone. They also give you an idea of how a computer can be used in your company and also an idea of other application areas where they could be used. Next week, we'll be looking at how microcomputers can be linked together and used for a wide range of office tasks. <laughs>